Hey everyone, Devilo here, and in today's video, we're diving back into the creative and ever-expanding world of Jujutsu Kaisen. To do this, we're going to start exactly where the anime has left us, at the end of the Death Paintings arc, or more specifically, right before the start of currently, my second favourite arc and the greatest backstory to any character introduced so far throughout this world. This here is the heartbreaking and tear-jerking, but yet, still somehow beautiful, Gojo Past arc or hidden inventory arc of Jujutsu Kaisen. Of course, if you are new around here and want to watch other explained content just like this, but for a variety of different series, then make sure you hit that subscribe button and also be sure to leave a like on the video, as it really helps out with that algorithm and pushing my stuff to a bunch of new amazing people. But anyway, enough of that, let's finally get into the world of Jujutsu Kaisen. So as the arc starts off, we find ourselves 12 years earlier in the past with a younger and still voluptuous grade 1 sorcerer Mei Mei, along with the second grade sorcerer Udahime, where they have been tasked to investigate a cursed mansion in Hamamatsu City. Unfortunately, both of them get caught within a barrier that somehow overlaps space itself. The girls deduce this after travelling inside of this mansion for 15 kilometers without seeing any of the markers that they had left behind. Because their walls are so squishy upon impact, Udahime decides that they should split up and move more unpredictably to escape the barrier. However, just before the girls are able to put their plan into action, the house is suddenly torn apart by the cursed technique Lapse Blue. As Udahime recovers from the sudden eruption, Jujutsu High's second year student, Satoru Gojo, appears in front of her. He asks if she's crying, annoying Udahime, and Meime also mocks her, asking Gojo if he would console her should the sorcerer cry. Gojo believes Meime wouldn't cry though, and just before Udahime is able to berate him, a giant curse appears behind her. Funnily enough though, instantly after the curse appears, an even larger curse spirit appears behind it to devour it. Also there, Jujutsu High's second year student, Tsukudu Geto, orders his curse to not eat the other one just yet so that he can absorb and assimilate it later. He tells Satoru it's not nice to pick on weaklings like Udahime, to which Gojo points out that Tsukudu is teasing Udahime without even realising it. Their classmate Shoko also arrives with them, much to the excitement of Udahime. Apparently Meimei and Udahime were trapped in a rare type of barrier that messes with space time itself. The other students were sent by Yaga, as it was odd that a grade 1 sorcerer hadn't made contact with them for a few days. Meimei immediately asks where the curtain is, shocking all of the students who had completely forgot to put up a barrier. Back at Jujutsu Tech, soon after news of a so-called explosion that destroyed the mansion makes the news, Grade 1 Sorcerer and currently the first year teacher Masamichi Yaga questions the three students. One of them said that they had put up a curtain and then left their manager behind. Shoko and Suguru are quick to point Gojo out, however Gojo complains that curtains are pointless since civilians can't see Jujutsu or curses anyway. Suguru argues that it's important that regular humans can't see sorcerers to provide a peace of mind and hide the existence of curses. Gojo believes it is a pain looking out for the weak, but Suguru believes that Jujutsu itself exists to protect non-sorcerers. However, Gojo disagrees and hates those righteous ideals, which begins to annoy Geto. As their argument begins to heat up, Masamichi returns to the class and the boys instantly change their outwards attitude. He then assigns them to a mission together that comes straight from Masamichi. Master Tengen. He says that there is a girl who is a perfect match for Master Tengen, who is known as the Star Plasma Vessel. Yaga tells the boys that they must escort the girl to Master Tengen and then erase her. The boys joke with each other, agreeing that Yaga has led his promotion to the next principal of the school drive him crazy. Suguru puts the jokes aside though and asks if the mission is meant to reset Master Tengen's curse technique. Gojo isn't sure what they're referring to when it's something that he thinks he should obviously know. Yaga explains that Tengen is immortal but his curse technique does not stop the aging process. Once a certain age is reached, evolution will occur and Master Tengen will no longer be the same person. Yaga explains that Tengen strengthens all of the barriers used by both Jujutsu High Schools as well as the auxiliary manager's techniques. Every 500 years, Master Tengen must merge with a compatible star plasma vessel and rewrite his body's information. Once the body is refreshed, the immortal curse technique will stop trying to change bodies and evolution will not occur. Satoru compares the situation to Digimon, which suffices in this case. 
The location of the star plasma vessel has been leaked and there are two groups that are currently searching for the girl. One is the cursed user group Q, who wants to take over the Jujutsu world by having Master Tengen lose all reason. The other is a star religious group that worships Tengen as their god, known as the Time Vessel Association. Tengen and the star plasma vessel must merge in two days when the moon is full. Gojo and Geto leave for their mission and discuss why the star religious group is after the star plasma vessel. Suguru explains that they worship a pure master Tengen and that the merger would sully the purity in their eyes. However, they are not a cursed user group and Suguru believes that they won't be major players. He says that they should focus on repelling Q, to which Gojo believes that they should be fine no matter what, since they are the strongest. Suguru interrupts his friend to advise him to be less rude around his superiors. While they discuss Satoru's bad attitude, there is an explosion at the site where they are meant to find the girl. Suddenly, the star plasma vessel is thrown from the building by someone from Q named Kokon. Before the girl hits the ground though, Suguru uses a flying curse to rescue her. He asks the curse user to not make a mess since the students already got in trouble today. Kokun demands that the Jujutsu High students hand over the girl, but Suguru refuses. Satoru watches from below, glad that Suguru made it in time. He notices though, five daggers thrown at him and uses Technique Infinity to halt them. Another Q soldier named Bayer confronts him and admits that he knows the name of the famous Satoru Gojo. Gojo taunts the soldier and says that he won't beat him senseless if he cries and apologizes now. Elsewhere at a similar time, Shui Kong, a representative of the Time Vessel Association, meets with a member of the Zenin clan to plan an assassination of the Star Plasma Vessel. However, the man claims that he is no longer a Zenin and instead goes by Toji Fushiguro now. He then accepts the contract to kill the girl. Back at the battle, Suguru effortlessly immobilizes Kokun with a curse that wants to kiss him. Kokun promises to quit being a curse user and grow rice on the countryside if Ghetto lets him go. Suguru ignores him further, irritating Kokun, and the Q soldier threatens that Baya, Q's strongest soldier, will come and kill them all. However, Ghetto soon shows Kokun a picture with Baya defeated on his phone. With Q's strongest soldier defeated, the organization soon disbands. Meanwhile, Kong from the Star Religious Group finds Toji betting on a horse race. Apparently, he used 30 million yen in advance to wear down Gojo and the sorcerers with him. Slightly confused by his actions, the representative needs to bring back a report to his client and remains skeptical of Toji. However, Toji is confident he'll get a return on that money for sure, but he ends up losing some of his bets on the horse races. The representative reminds the sorcerer that he's counting on him and before he leaves he asks Toji how Megami is doing. But Toji literally couldn't care less and he can't even remember who that is at this point. Back with Gojo and Geto, we are finally introduced to Riko, who awakens in Satoru's arms and immediately attacks him. She believes them to be her attackers until her caretaker Masato arrives. All three of them then get on the same page and Riko begins to discuss her connection to Master Tengen. In casual fashion though, the two boys ignore her and then she realizes that she's currently running late for school. Rather than take her back to Jujutsu High now, Riko ends up back at Renchoku Girls High School due to the orders from Master Tengen. They are told to oblige Riko's requests because she will no longer exist after this merger. It is their mission to allow her to enjoy herself, which Masato is thankful for. Moments later, Suguru checks his surveillance curses and realizes that two of them had already been taken out. They both head to find Riko immediately, while at the same time, two curse users trespass on the campus. It is revealed that Toji had used a dark website for curse users to place a $30 million bounty on Riko's head, and these men have come to collect that bounty. Toji sits on the phone with Kong while eating at a dumpling stand. He learns that the sorcerers protecting Reiko have not returned to Jizuzu High. This is good for the Time Vessel Association because now more than just total lunatics will go after the bounty. The representative points out that the 30 million paid to him was a service fee so if someone else kills the Star Plasma Vessel, Toji may end up losing all of the money. Fushiguro though isn't worried as he knows Gojo will take care of anyone who comes after them. 
Satoru Gojo is the first in a hundred years of the Gojo family to wield both the six eyes and the limitless curse technique. Toji is not even sure that he could take out the Star Plasma vessel with Gojo still present. He plans on using curse users for the remaining 39 hours of the mission to wear down Gojo's group. It will be free labor since no one will be able to cash in on the bounty. The representative realizes that this makes the limit of two days turn out in their favor. Additionally, it makes it easier for them to gather cursed users. Toji says that they are moving faster than he expected and he'll move out soon as well. He tells the rep to have that 30 million ready, but the man wants to talk about his cut, which disinterests Toji. At Renchoku Girls Junior High, Satoru Sugaru and Masato move to find Riko, who is at a musical class which is either taking place in the music room or at the chapel. Sugaru plans on heading straight for the intruders while Satoru and Masato split up to find Riko. Gojo is irritated because he wanted to stay close to the girl. Masato apologizes as Riko didn't want to be seen with boys at an all-girls school. Suguru splits off on his own, wondering who these curse users could be with. Without Q around, hired muscle for the Time Vessel Association could be trouble. Gino makes a turn down a hallway and encounters an old gentleman who immediately covers his front and rear with Shikigami. The curse user recognizes Suguru's uniform and assumes that there are multiple opponents. Gino notices this and understands that his opponent knows what he is doing. His opponent analyzes him as well, recognizing the student's curse technique is some sort of curse manipulation. The old man keeps up his conversation with Suguru while plotting to get in close range. However, Geto tells him to not waste his time and uses his giant worm-like curse to fill the entire hallway. Suguru believes he's won, but the curse user appears from the window behind him, using the blind spot his opponent created to his advantage. He gets within close range of Suguru and believes that he has the advantage. However, his life randomly and instantly flashes before his eyes. Suguru dominates the old man in close quarters and beats him senselessly with a ferocious succession of quick strikes. He recognizes that the old man wanted to get in close and states that fighters who are presented with a single way to win are easy to manipulate. He questions the old man, asking if he is aligned with Q or the Time Vessel Association. Elsewhere, the others continue to head towards Rico, who is currently in the chapel. Gojo barges into the chapel, yelling for Rico, surprising everyone inside and embarrassing her. The young girls inside are enthralled by how cute Gojo is, so they start asking Riko questions. Satoru even takes off his sunglasses for them, annoying Riko with his confidence. The teacher makes the girls settle down and momentarily scolds Gojo, before giving away her number. While the girls continue to argue, Satoru grabs Riko and escapes the chapel with her. She's annoyed he didn't follow her request, but he explains to her that curse users have attacked the school. Goju wants to head straight for Jujutsu High, but as he runs across one of the rooftops with the girl, he is spotted by a curse user. The curse user though, doesn't recognize the guy that is with her, but recognizes the girl. Masato confronts the curse user from behind and asks if he is with the Time Vessel Association or Q. They engage in a short scuffle, but it ends shortly after Masato beats up the man by striking him below the belt. Geto arrives shortly after, completely surprised by her strength. Based on the conversation, the paper bag curse user is able to confirm that the girl he saw is the bounty. Suddenly, he melts into a puddle of mud, making Masato question if he really was a Shikigami. Suguru calls Satoru and informs him that there is a 30 million yen bounty on Riko's head, with a time limit on a dark website for curse users. Satoru understands and hangs up the phone immediately, as he and Riko are surrounded by four of the same curse users. Riko also thinks that the curse user's clones are Shikigami, while Gojo says that their opponent should be a Jujutsu sorcerer. The curse user refuses and forms a fifth clone, claiming being a professional sorcerer is more dangerous than it's worth. While the new doppelganger is forming, Gojo attacks quickly and uses his curse technique, Laps Blue, to quickly take out two people in an instant. Riko notices that the Shikigami haven't been dispelled, and Gojo corrects her, saying that they are not Shikigami, instead, they are clones of the real techniques cast her. Two of the clones get in close to Satoru, but they can't bypass his infinity, making them easy prey for a counter-attack. Thanks to his six eyes, Satoru is able to read his opponent's curse technique and decides to divulge his own, allowing him to create a magnetic force that brings the curse users closer to him. 
Satoru attempts to unleash the curse technique reversal of the Limitless, but it doesn't work. Instead, he's forced to knock out his opponent with a punch, confusing Riko. Suddenly, she gets a text with a picture of Masato, captured by the enemy. Suguru apologizes to Riko and Gojo for leaving Masato behind without considering her importance to the enemy. Satoru believes that their enemy will try to pull off a trade. He knows that they have the upper hand and plans on coordinating with their opponents to rescue Masato. Riko refuses because she hasn't gotten to say her goodbyes yet and worries that the merge will happen beforehand. Gojo assumes that the enemy will contact them soon and agrees to bring Riko along as long as she isn't scared or lowers the chances of Masato's survival. The kidnappers demand Onikawa as their meeting spot. Once there, Satoru, Suguru, and Riko are able to rescue Masato and apprehend the kidnappers. At the beach, Masato apologizes for being captured by a non-sorcerer member of the Time Vessel Association. Suguru shares blame with her and explains that they were able to travel safely on a plane aided by their abilities. They wonder why Onikawa was chosen as their meeting spot and Masato suggests that maybe it's so that they could attack the airport. However, it is explained that Jujutsu Hai took precautions by sending in the other first years first, Yu Hayabada and Kento Nanami, to guard the premises. While both of them are committed to do their duty at the airport, Satoru messes around with Riko and the others at the beach. He decides to leave Onikawa tomorrow instead to avoid interactions with more curse users. However, Suguru is worried that Satoru's curse technique is taxing his body, but Gojo assures Suguru that his presence makes everything okay. Hayabara and Inami are thrilled to learn that they also have to stay one more day. On the final day of the escort, Riko successfully reaches the foothills of Tokyo Jujutsu High four hours after her bounty is lifted. They pass through a number of torii gates, putting them inside Jujutsu High's barriers. With the mission almost complete, Goju deactivates his technique. However, as soon as he does, he is also stabbed from behind by Toji Fushigoro. Satoru asks if he knows this man from somewhere, but Toji tells him not to worry about remembering some guy's name. Gojo slightly recognizes Toji because earlier on in life, while still with the Zenin family, Toji once went to see the young Gojo boy. He was a big deal and was the first and last person to notice Toji's presence while standing behind them. Back in reality, Toji had waited until Gojo was worn down to strike stabbing him from behind in a complete surprise. Satoru forces himself up into the air and Suguru summons his giant man-eating hookworm curse to devour the sorcerer killer. Suguru rushes to his friend's side but Gojo assures him that his wound isn't too severe. He reinforced it with cursed energy to reduce any further damage. Gojo asks Gedo to take Riko to Tengen's place while he takes care of the assassin. He, Riko, and Masato then leave the area as Toji slashes his way out of the giant curse and exercises it. Toji looks around for the Star Plasma Vessel and claims he's getting rusty for not killing Gojo in one blow. Satoru taunts Toji, stating that the bounty has been lifted, but Toji reveals that he is the one who had made the bounty in the first place. He finds it funny how they went to Onikawa, and adds that he had to create an opening with the illusion of goals using the time limit. No sorcerers from Gojo's side were killed, but Toji still managed to get him to deactivate his curse technique. In retaliation, Satoru unleashes his curse technique Laps Blue on Toji, sending him flying using the magnetic field of attraction. However, Toji is fast enough to evade this technique. This makes Satoru realize that Toji has absolutely zero curse energy, meaning he's using nothing but an innate physical prowess to fight. Satoru can't read his moves, but he is able to knock Toji away once he advances. He recognizes that his opponent knows about the Limitless technique and likely has a plan. Toji disappears into the nearby buildings and Satoru can't sense him without cursed energy. He decides to clear the area of all possible blind spots using cursed technique Laps, maximum cursed energy output, blue. The student believes his enemy may be hiding in the forest and is surprised when a random swarm of flyheads appear. He believes that they have been kept in the same cursed spirit that had been storing Fushiguro's weapons, and Toji's plan might be connected to the cursed tool he took out as well. 
With his view still blocked by this mock grenade, Gojo plans on using blue again until he realizes that Toji might have left and gone straight after Riko. Suddenly, Toji appears behind him. Satoru notices it in time, but his six eyes recognizes the foreign curse energy flowing out of Toji's curse tool. This puts Satoru on the defensive, almost instantly sealing his fate. Toji stabs Satoru through the neck with his special grade curse tool, an inverted spear of heaven. This item's effect is to force the stoppage of all curse techniques, leaving Gojo completely defenseless. Toji nullifies Satoru's technique and cuts him down with a flurry of slashes in a flash, leaving the young Gojo in a bloody heap, appearing to be dead. Elsewhere in the catacombs at the bottom of Tokyo Jujutsu High, Masato says her final goodbyes to Riko. They cry and remind each other that they will always love one another. Then, Suguru stands by to complete the escort and shows Riko to the main hall of the Tomb of the Star. Suguru then gives Riko directions to Master Tenken, who is protected by a barrier that only allows those invited inside. However, before she heads off, Geto gives her the option that she can either merge with the Tengen there or turn back and return home with them. Before the mission began, both Satoru and Suguru had both agreed that they would call the mission off if the Star Plasma Vessel didn't agree with the merger. Riko had been alone for most of her life and was different from other people. Her parents had died when she was young, so she believed that she would be okay leaving everyone behind. However, after spending time with everyone on the escort, Riko cries and admits that she wants to stay. Suguru offers to take Riko's hand and take her home, to which she agrees, but sadly, she is shot in the head, dropping to the floor and mortifying Suguru. As Riko's corpse lays on the ground before Ghetto, Toji reveals himself and states that it is time to wrap things up. Suguru asks Toji why, and Toji informs him that he killed Satoru Gojo. Suguru believes him, and in a fit of anger, brings out two of his strongest curse spirits to fight. As the battle begins, Toji begins explaining that the majority of the barriers protecting Tokyo Jujutsu High are simply hiding it. So long as someone knows their location in advance, they could easily locate the Tomb of the Star and the Cursed Warehouse. Suguru attempts to attack Toji with his Rainbow Dragon, and the assassin fires more rounds at Suguru while he continues talking. Toji manages to avoid Suguru's curse and continues explaining how he managed to infiltrate the school. He swallowed the curse spirit he uses to store his curse tools, allowing him to stay invisible. Suguru interrupts Toji, demanding he stop talking as he knows that revealing certain information can improve his heavenly restriction. What he doesn't know is how he tracked them into the entrance into the tombs. No residuals were left behind, but Toji had used more practical methods of tracking to follow them. His lack of curse energy makes his five senses sharpen to their peak, allowing him to detect curse spirits as well. Gedo asks about Masato, but Toji isn't even sure if she's dead or alive. Rainbow Dragon then attacks, but this time Toji slashes it apart with ease, using his katana light curse tool. Suguru was shocked by this because his Rainbow Dragon had the hardest skin among all of his curse spirits. Toji isn't impressed by Suguru's technique, but he's suddenly caught inside the second spirit's innate domain. This unwillingly places Toji in a pack that will keep their domain there until the question is answered. The imaginary vengeful spirit asks if she is pretty, but Toji simply replies that she isn't his type. The vengeful spirit domain instantly disappears, allowing Toji to see the scissors floating around him. They are close to his body, ready to cut him apart, but Toji effortlessly deflects all of the blades with the inverted spear of heaven. Suguru comes in close and attempts to absorb Toji's inventory curse, but it rejects him somehow. Toji draws a second blade from his curse and slashes both Suguru and his curse spirit, defeating them both in an instant. Toji puts Suguru down and incapacitates him claiming he would have easily killed him, but the possibility he could release all the cursed spirits he's taken in upon death irritates Toji. Still unimpressed, Toji tells Suguru to thank his parents for being born, then saying that despite all their blessings and abilities, they all have lost to a simple monkey who can't even use Jujutsu. At the same time, in the foothills of Jujutsu High, Goju's eye twitches, showing some signs of life. At the Time Vessel Association headquarters, House of the Children of the Star, Toji delivers the Star Plasma Vessel's corpse to a direct representative of the Star Religious Group, Shigeru Sonoda. He confirms her death and states that they will pay Toji extra for his troubles. 
He goes on to explain that Master Tengen began spreading Japanese Buddhism in the Nara period and preached what would become the foundation of Jujutsu sorcerers. The world of Jujutsu and religion do not agree and from that disparity the Time Vessel Association was born. Due to this, Jujutsu sorcerers can't harm the group while non-curse users are perfect candidates to work for them. The Time Vessel Association couldn't afford to allow an impure merger to take place and they are ready to fall alongside the star if needed to be. Toji thinks Shigeru is crazy and asks the man why he didn't kill the maid. Instead of using Masato's death, he created a false sense of security from the rescue and in turn this helped Toji. They used a private jet to transport the hostage to Onikawa which Toji and the middleman both think is hilarious. As the two go to leave, Toji asks him to go out for food with him, but the man jokingly says that he only associates with Toji in business or in hell. As Toji exits the premises, he runs into a restored Satoru Gojo and is very surprised to see someone he killed not too long ago. Gojo reveals that he had used a reverse curse technique to heal himself and claims that Toji has lost for not cutting his head off. He explains, overusing the six eyes to process the limitless as well as the reversed curse technique has taxed his brain, making him delirious with a crazed demeanor. And at the very edge of death, Satoru experienced and understood the core of cursed energy. Insulted by the idea that he is lost, Toji takes out the inverted spear of heaven and claims that the battle is just beginning. Gojo gets excited, agreeing with Toji completely. Toji attempts to blitz Satoru, slashing at him several times. However, Gojo is able to avoid them and manages to get behind Toji and levitates into the air. Toji turns to face him in time, but Gojo learns to flow the reversed curse energy into the limitless technique to successfully unleash the curse technique reversal, Rent. The explosion repulsion power sends Toji flying a great several hundred meters as Satoru Gojo floats proudly with an insane smirk on his face. Toji acknowledges that his opponent is indeed a monster. Toji stretches out his arm and confirms that the energy wave Satoru used didn't break any of his bones. He then breaks down each of the logistics behind the technique of the limitless and fully believes that none of them are a problem. He connects the inverted spear of heaven to a chain and has a plan for each of the three distinct powers of the limitless. Even so, an uneasiness lingers over Toji. Gojo levitates above him, upside down and wearing the same insane grin despite having lost their previous fight. Toji begins to hesitate, but quickly calms down and makes his move to kill the young sorcerer, swinging the chain wildly in every single direction. Gojo then apologizes to Riko because he's not vengeful for her. Throughout heaven and earth, Gojo believes he alone is the honored one. Toji creates a dust wave that forces Satoru to float above it only for the inverted spear of heaven to appear in front of him. He thinks the attack will likely land, so Gojo focuses on countering. Inherited techniques have a manual on how to use them, but it's easy for other clans to learn how it works as well. He knows Toji must be a Zenin, but there is one technique only known to a few in the Gojo family. The Hollow Technique combines the motion of blue and the reversal of red, colliding two infinites that create an imaginary mass that annihilates everything it touches. Satoru unleashes the Hollow Technique, purple, and erases a large portion of Toji's left torso from existence, dealing him a fatal wound and ending their fight. Toji's uneasiness stemmed from him breaking his own rule. He knows he should have said, I don't work for free, and made a run for it, but the greatest sorcerer alive stood before him. Toji wanted to discredit it and crush it to spite the Jujutsu world and the Zen family. The self-affirmation caused Toji to deviate from his true self, and at that point, he had already lost. Unfortunately for him, Toji was unable to put aside his petty pride. Satoru asks Toji for any last words and he initially claims he doesn't have any. However, he then thinks of the young Megami and tells Satoru how his young son will be sold to the Zenin family in two or three years and to do as he pleases with that information. Suguru makes his way to the house of the star and is surprised to find Toji's inventory curse injured on the ground. He goes inside to find Satoru holding Riko's covered corpse surrounded by the worshippers applauding her death. Shocked by how much Satoru has changed, Suguru even questions if he's the same person. Gojo asks if Gido feels like killing all of the non-sorcerers around them because in his current state of mind he doesn't think he'd feel anything. 
Suguru replies that that is pointless since the ones in charge had fled. Now that the sorcerers are still involved, the Time Vessel Association can't talk themselves out of the situation anymore. As a group with problems to begin with, the Star Religious Group will disband with time. Gojo questions if there even needs to be a reason, but Suguru assures him that there does, especially for Jujutsu sorcerers. One year later, in August 2007, Gojo demonstrates to Suguru and Shoko his ability to automatically activate and utilize the infinity. He now possesses an automatic targeting option for Jujutsu that can distinguish between mass, speed, shape and intensity of fused energy all in order to ascertain the danger of any approaching object. Now Gojo can almost always have the Limitless active with minimal resources. Normally doing so would fry his brain, but using a reverse curse technique at the same time keeps him fresh. As Sadaro tells them about his other improvements, Gedo can't help but notice that Gojo alone became the strongest. Now that he can handle any mission on his own, Gedo will be going on no more assignments alone as well. With the last year's frequent disasters, curses spawned all over Japan, making it a busy summer for the sorcerers. The endless cycle of exorcism, consumption, using his curse spirit manipulation was beginning to weigh on Geto. He began to lose his way due to the hideous evil of humanity. He wanted to follow through with his duty as a sorcerer, but he couldn't help but think of all of those followers of the star as monkeys. After Suguru takes a shower, he waits around in a room alone to think, until Yu Hayabara comes to give him some company. He tells him about his faraway mission on the next day, and they discuss souvenirs until Suguru asks Hayabara if he's okay with being a sorcerer. Hayabara replies that he's not the type to think about tough questions, but giving his all towards something he can help with provides a great feeling for him. Suguru agrees, and suddenly, they're both confronted by a woman, asking them what kind of girls they are into. The woman walks into the room with Suguru and Hayabara. Suguru questions her identity, while Hayabara answers and claims that he can tell she's not a bad person. He leaves Suguru and the woman alone, and shortly after, she introduces herself as the special grade sorcerer Yuki Tsukumo. Suguru learned about her as the special grade who doesn't take on missions and bums around overseas. Yuki explains that Jujutsu ends up treating the symptoms of curses while she wants to get to the root cause of it all. Suguru is confused by what she means by the root of it all, so she explains that she desires a world where curses do not exist. She asks him what are curses and Suguru is able to explain that curses are born from negative energy that leaks from humans. And since this is the case, there are only two ways to create a world where curses don't exist. They must either eradicate cursed energy from all humans entirely or teach humans to control it. Toji Zenin was a model case for the former. He was the only person Yuki had found all over the entire world that possessed no cursed energy at all. His heavenly restriction granted him enhanced senses as well as the ability to resist curses. He truly was a superhuman and Yuki tells Suguru that there's no shame in losing to someone as powerful as he was. Yuki wanted to research him a bit, but he refused her. Cases of heavenly restriction are so scarce, so Yuki decides to focus on the latter option for eradicating curses. Yuki informs Suguru that other than cases where sorcerers die and become curses, sorcerers cannot give rise to curses. Cursed energy does not leak from sorcerers at nearly the same rate and flow as non-sorcerers. This is due to the difference in the amount of cursed energy some sorcerers use and how it flows while being contained within their bodies. In a general sense, if every human became a sorcerer, it would be impossible for curses to exist. Shocked and still haunted by the followers of the star, Suguru asks Yuki why they shouldn't just kill every non-sorcerer. He snaps out of it right after that though, and Yuki gives him a serious reply. Weeding out non-sorcerers to force evolution might be the easiest route, but it's also the craziest. She asks Suguru if he hates non-sorcerers, and he's unable to give her an answer. Suguru used to believe that sorcerers existed to protect non-sorcerers, but now he doesn't even know if humanity is worth fighting for. Yuki confirms that Suguru must choose between looking down on non-sorcerers and resisting that feeling before getting on her bike and leaving. Before heading out on her motorcycle, Yuki says to him that she'd like the three special grades to get along and reveals that the Master Tengen had stabilized. Sometime later, Suguru and Inami are in the morgue mourning over Hayabada's death. Kento believes it was supposed to be a simple mission to take out a grade 2 curse spirit. However, in a far off area they travel to, the curse was the subject of a guardian deity's religion. 
As the deity of that area, it became more powerful and should have been a grade 1. Sugudu tells Kento to get some rest and assures him that Gojo will complete the mission. Nanami says that Gojo should take on every mission alone from now on. This makes Gido think about how being a sorcerer is like running a marathon. The finish line is too unclear and there's nothing at the end of the road but a mountain of fellow sorcerers dead corpses. Next month, in September, Sugudu is sent on a mission to investigate a village where a cursed spirit had been kidnapping people and causing abnormal deaths. Sugudu is able to exercise the curse but ends up finding two young girls who had been beaten and caged. Sugudu tries to tell them that they are not the cause of this incident but their non-sorcerers call them monsters like their parents who should have died at birth. Having heard enough, Sugudu unleashes his cursed spirits on the people and accepts his true feelings. Ghetto murders 112 non-sorcerers and fled the village afterwards. The original target of his mission, the cursed spirit that had been plaguing the village was thought to be the culprit after all the people were found dead. However, further investigation revealed the residuals from Sugudu's curse manipulation technique. Masamichi Yaga was tasked with giving Sasuro the horrible news surrounding Sugudu. Neither of them can make sense of what happened with their misguided ally, making Gojo panic for the first time in his life. Meanwhile, in Shinjuku, Shoko is confronted by Suguru while he is smoking. They have a conversation about the allegations against him with a friendly tone, but Shoko is quick to contact Satoru. Shortly after, Gojo finds Geto walking through the crowd and demands an explanation. Just as he told Shoko, he wants to build a world without curses and non-sorcerers. Not even Suguru's parents were spared, making Gojo question Suguru's morals. Geto believes that there is meaning in all of their deaths, but Gojo claims that his goal is pointless. But again, Sugudu believes his friend could do it by himself, so it's not impossible. If they could switch places, the impossible could become possible. Gido decides to leave after confirming that this is the life that he has chosen. Gido says that Gojo should kill him if he wants, since there is meaning in that too. And as Sugudu walks away with the crowd, Gojo begins to aim his hollow purple technique at him. However, Gojo ends up being unable to kill his best friend, allowing Gido to get away. He meets up with Masamichi later and reveals that he was unable to take Sugudu out. Even though Gojo was the strongest, he realized that he can only save those prepared to be saved. At the building that once served as the Time Vessel Association's headquarters, Gido comes before a new congregation, made up of the remnants of the Star Religious Group and like-minded people. Sugudu wishes to talk them all over, serving as priests who can free people of their curses. This way, he can collect money and curses at the same time. There are numerous voices of opposition, so Sugudu makes an example out of Sonoda by brutally smashing him on the stage. The next time he addresses the crowd, he isn't as friendly. He demands that all of the monkeys obey him. Elsewhere, Satoru Gojo finds a young Megami Fushiguro. The young Megami questions the strange man and asks why he's looking at him strangely. Satoru appears annoyed because Megami looks exactly like Toji. As the two speak, Gojo tells Megami that his father is from the Zenin family, which he left to have his son. The Zenin clan loves people blessed with a curse technique, and Megami is approaching the age where his curse technique will manifest, which makes it perfect time to sell him to the Zenins. This was Toji's trump card against them, which is unfortunate for Megami. The first grader replies that he doesn't care about his father and his mother Sukumi hasn't returned in a while either. He believes that they use the divorce money to run off together and live happily without him. Satoru asks Megami if he wants to go to the Zenin family but the boy is only worried about what will happen to his sister. Satoru taunts him about it to get a rise out of Megami and when the youngster gives him a fair scowl for insisting, he insists that there is no way Sukumi would be happy at the Zenin family which leaves Satoru satisfied. He promises then to take care of things for Megami and asks him instead to get strong. 11 years later in the present, on October 19th 2018, Gojo Sensei wakes up from his dream and all of these past events in his life. He awakens to his three students, including Megami, looking at him. Gojo smirks at his longtime protege, proud of how he's grown since then, which confuses Megami. 
So, that officially brings us to the very end of the Gojo Past arc or Hidden Inventory arc of Jujutsu Kaisen. Kind of whichever you want to call it, I guess. The anime is probably going with Hidden Inventory by the looks of it, and the manga is sticking with Gojo Past arc from my memory. So, if you guys have enjoyed the video, obviously be sure to chuck a comment down below and let me kind of know what kind of arcs and stuff you want me to go over in the future for different series and all that kind of stuff the next arc that i will be going over is going to be obviously i think it's the bat devil arc of chainsaw man uh for all my like tokyo avengers guys out there i've still got the tokyo avengers like script to do or oh, no i've pretty much done the script now it's kind of just got to like edit it up and finish it off and then i'll be able to kind of record that video and start editing the actual footage for it as well uh it's just a lot longer than i expected it to actually be uh as it's like 40 chapters or something and this video was only like 15 so you can see it's probably going to be around an hour hour and a half long um but heaps of videos to, to come in the future for like arcs explain but just make sure you chuck down in the comment section below so i can see kind of what series you guys are most interested interested in seeing in the future but yeah obviously this arc is extremely stellar but at the same time it's actually pretty sad as you kind of see ghetto go from the the smarter one i guess you could say out of the two being the one with more brains realizing that you know they shouldn't do specific things because it's against the normal morals of what people should do and him going to question his own like morals and what he should believe in life and him going from being this nice dude to being someone who belittles people and calls the monkeys at the end of you know just 14 chapters here is completely and utterly crazy so you know and, it, and it, it hits me kind of differently you know like on some days when i read through this arc it's like damn like it's really dark at the the actual center of it like gojo did not have a good like gojo did not have a good time uh starting off i guess you could say at the jujutsu college losing you know some of his friends and then obviously what happens later on with uh ghetto is just terrible if you have seen the movie or my previous jujutsu kaisen video but yeah anyway oh and on there if you have noticed my other jujutsu kaisen video got taken down another one whoa but um we're gonna get that back obviously it's just gonna take time as per usual it'll be back up in like two weeks i'd say and six hour long video got taken down fuck yeah another one another one of the books but yeah it'll, it'll be back up as well but anyway if you guys have enjoyed the video and want to see more stuff just like this then make sure you comment down below like i have said a million times before in every other old video and make sure you leave it a like as well and if you are new around here make sure you know like do obviously hit that subscribe button so you can keep up to date with your favorite manga or just you know anime when i decide to go over it and if you want to kind of watch it and have a refresher or that kind of stuff then hit it down below but if not for now it's been your professional degenerate diavolo and i will see you all in a bit bye